did was he smacked his hand across my butt. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Levin. I mean, like, why you have a bonnet on? I'm doing a story time today, and it's also like five o'clock in the morning, and I'm about to get in the shower and go to sleep. I have a list of things that you guys probably want to know, and I suggest you grab your tea or your drink or whatever it is you want to, you know, munch on, and let's get started. And the lifestyle is. Um, a little bit different than your regular person. Um, I definitely have had my fair share of highs and lows. And I think that people have a different idea of what it is necessarily that I do or what it is to do what I do or how it's done properly. And that's really what these uh, story times are about, my different experiences. Um, I also will definitely be doing like question and answer so you guys can like really ask the questions you want to know about it and I can really tell you guys my opinion, what I recommend, what I don't recommend and things like that. My first day dancing was something that I did not expect, something that I was not ready for and something that I could not predict exactly. So let me tell you how I became a dancer in the first place. Um, I was in college at the time. And I needed a job because I didn't have a job. I was living in Queens College. I was looking for a job. I did not have anywhere to work at the time. Um, I had got fired from the Gap because the hiring manager was a female and the manager was a male and the manager had a crush on me. And he still writes me on Instagram to this day. I know my page got deleted recently, but he was still writing me up until today. And this is like a long time ago. She said it was because I was late, but I was told that it was actually because she had a crush on him and he wasn't paying any attention because he was interested in me. And I felt like that was really, really corny, especially because like my sections were always folded perfect. Everything was always organized and neat. Customers, I always help customers. So I was like, uh, whatever. But if you know me, you know I'm always late, so it's believable. So I took that on the chin or whatever, and I was still in college and I was looking for another job. I was applying everywhere. I was giving them my resumes. And at this time, I felt like a lot of people were having trouble getting a job. And and I was just happened to be one of them. I was very, very upset. And the girls I was hanging out with, which is a whole different story that I have to write down to. Hanging out with actual hoes. I said actual hoes. That's another story. But they kept suggesting that because of the body that I had at that age and the way that I looked that I should dance and I was very much against it because I didn't even have rhythm at the time. Girls at the time her name was like Isabella, prostitute like on back page. She had no issue going to the club so she went to a club by the name of Riviera's which is actually on Steinway and she said she made like $900 and she had no rhythm. So we were just like, she made $900. And I was like, $900? Like I'd work like, you know, <laughs> all week for, you know, like that. So I'm like, damn, you made that in one night? I'm just like, she, she I thought she was okay looking. Um, her voice was annoying, but I thought she was okay looking. And you know, she's a little lighter than me. And she was like, I think like Spanish or like mixed or something like that. And I was just like, I didn't want to do it still, but it got more persuasive. So there's another girl, her name is Dominique. She was a hoe too. She didn't really want to be a hoe. She wasn't good at it, I think. Her boyfriend was like, you know, y'all should go together. Maybe you feel more comfortable if y'all go together. So that's exactly what we did. We went to the like auditions together. We got like one of those magazines. Um, I don't know if they have them anymore, but used, it used to be at every strip club, you could find like a stack of magazines. And in those magazines, it would tell you, it would have advertisements for every club. I wish I had one so I could show you. I'll try to insert a picture. But it had advertisements for every club, numbers to call if they had website or Instagram or Facebook or something like that. This is where you'll be able to find it. It was like a strip club directory. So we went to our first club that we heard about. 
I soon understood that because I was going with this girl and she didn't look how I looked and didn't carry herself the way I carried myself, that certain clubs weren't gonna hire me with her. I went to one club at the time, it was called Rouge. There's a lot of Russian girls, they had a day shift, a lot of lap dances and things like that. And so we went there and the house mom, her name was Mo, her brother was the one of the owners, I think his name was Tommy. He was very spicy. She was, I think they were white or Italian, something like that. But she was black to me. I, her attitude and her nails and everything, down to the, the short haircut, like once I was a little longer, once I was a little shorter. If I can find a picture, I'm gonna try to insert it so you guys can see. <laughs> but I gave her, she was like, uh, we did a little audition, they hired us. There were other girls there. There were other black girls there. We, we danced with a dyke. I don't know if that's a proper term. I don't know, honestly. I hope I'm not sounding ignorant or like aggressive female. I don't know. Was gay and like was very boyish, very uncomfortable. Like what? Dancing for guys. But she said she made good money. She rode like a motorcycle to work, had like fast, like little race car and everything. Like she had her own thing going on. Uh, we worked our first day. I can't remember if it was the first day or like sometime in the first week that we worked. My first day, I went upstairs and I wasn't ready. Like I really wasn't ready. My name has always been Blue. Um, unless there was a Blue and I had to be called Slevin, which is my Instagram name. So it's not too far off. Today I was very uncomfortable. Um, I was very nervous. I was you know, half naked and I'm in a strange place and there are strange people and there's weird guys. And I was just like, I don't know how y'all could do this. And I had on a skirt, cause you, you could wear like top and bottoms, like bathing suit thongs, but you had to have on a skirt to cover when you're walking around the club. Um, I'll never forget, I walked upstairs and Mika, she had like colorful mermaid hair, which I resonated with. She was standing next to this guy. I forgot his name. She was next to this guy. And she said, come and talk to him. He's a nice guy. And I was just like, nice guy here? Like, how could you be a nice guy and be here? Like, I never really, like, been to a strip club. I had never, like, like, I don't even, I don't, I don't even dance at parties. So I was just really out of my element. Not a booger, guys. It's my nose ring, by the way. I meant to tell you that. Stood there for a few seconds. And like, he didn't tell him that I was new. So what he did was he smacked his hand across my butt and said, I like her. Um, he said something about, I think like his wife doesn't have a butt or something, something. He said something funny. And I just was like, my eyes went wide and I was just standing there and she was like, I was like, I can't do this. And I went downstairs and I started crying because I was just like, he touched me. Like he touched me. Like I didn't know like, that they could do that. And she, you know, she told him, she came, she was like, no, it's okay. Like, you kind of gonna have to get used to that. And she was like, she told the guy, like she's new, she's her first day. She's never had any experiences or nothing like that. And he was like, I'm sorry. I really apologize. I didn't mean to offend you. So his way of making it up was he was like, can I take you for, a, can I, can I get a lap dance? And I was confused because I'm like, what? And she was like, she looked at me and she pulled me to the side and she kind of like explained to me like, he wants to, you know, give you dances. This is how much it's gonna cost. Like, it's like $25. You give $5 to the, um, like the house, which is like the manager who's standing there and you get $20 yourself for each dance. And she was like, dance for him. He dances a lot of girls. He loves new girls. He loves girls with nice little booties, big butts, and he's a regular. So if he dances you today and like say he's always gonna dance you, and I was just like, this is like being thrown into the fire pit at this. What do you mean he wants to dance me? You just told him I was new. I was just like, oh my God, like I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I felt dirty. And like, I didn't have a job. But everybody believes, I don't like relying on people, especially men. And although I was talking to someone at the time, I knew that, you know, when you're being dependent upon somebody, there are limitations to what you can and can't say, or what you can and can't do, or 
how they act about certain things. Like, you can be told no, and that's not a word that I like to hear. So I make sure that I do what I have to do so that I don't have to hear no or I can't or you have to wait or it doesn't, you know. So I sucked it up and I went back there and I learned a few things this day. I learned that I don't like to be touched and that I can like be outside of my head if that makes sense. So I danced in for a few songs and at first it was like, it was grotesque in a sense, like no disrespect to him. But it was it was just grotesque at first. And it was just like, at first I was like standing there, like, you know, okay, I'm dancing in front of him, like, I don't know, like, and then it was like, you know, you give him a lap dance. And it was really, really awkward. And I felt really, really embarrassed. And I wanted to keep crying. But I was like, I just have to do this for a little while until I find a job. Okay, cool. I think he danced me for like $100 or something. And I was just like, whoo, I made $100 in like 15 minutes? God, I was like, okay. But I still felt grotesque. I still felt disgusted. I still felt embarrassed. I felt dirty. Regardless of what I did, I felt dirty. You, they call your name, you get on stage. At this time, it was slow, so you get on stage by yourself, which really puts a spotlight on you. At the time, I didn't know like how to make my butt clap or anything like that. So they had to teach me. They just became like, I would say, come, like, I'm embarrassed, come with me. <laughs> like, you know, show me what to do so I can feel more comfortable, more relaxed. Um, looking back, I'll say, don't befriend the girls you work with because it can come back to bite you. And it definitely came back to bit me a few times. Just like really nerve wracking, really like, I was really repulsed. But it was just day shifts. So I think it was like six hours or some something like that. So I think I got there from 12 to maybe six. I'm not exactly sure. Or 12 to eight and eight started night shift. I can't really remember too well. So I was doing that and the girl I was with wasn't having as much luck as I was as far as like guys coming in and wanting to talk to her or whatever. I've always had like a really good personality and I'm kind of like easy to talk to. So it was kind of easy for me to talk to like, oh, hi, what's your name? Like, you know, they would tell me, like, this is what you say to guys. Hi, what's your name? You know, you ask them. I wasn't comfortable at the time to ask a guy for a dance because it was uncomfortable to me. But I would just have conversation. You know, maybe they want to watch you on stage. At this time in this club, you would go around the bar and you would collect tips from the guys sitting at the bar. Some guys might tip you, some guys might not. So because this is like a more Caucasian club, it might be like two, three dollars they give you. Somebody who's never done this before, who's never made like, you know, money like that, it it definitely adds up. They used to have food. They had hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries, stuff like that. So you would sit with a guy, he might say, are you hungry? Yes, I'm hungry. I would like lunch <laughs> or I would like a snack before I go. I don't believe in drinking like at work. And although I used to drink more so heavily at this time. Like I would drink Hennessy and stuff like that. I don't think I drank my first day. I would like, I would oblige somebody if they want to take shots, but I'm not going to really ask for a drink unless I'm really cold or something like that. The girl I was with did not make any money. I think she made, I think she like probably danced like maybe one or two people. I don't know if she wasn't good at it. I don't know if her personality was throwing it off. I'm not exactly sure. I wasn't really paying too much attention to her because I was having my own in my head trauma due to situation because it's it's traumatizing i don't care what anybody says and i went home that day the girl didn't want to go back i did and i kept going because i knew that i could save this money and i could like do whatever it is that i wanted to do pay my bills or take care of myself moving forward one day me and the girl got into an argument um dominique because i forgot what her name was but she wanted to leave and she wanted me to leave with her. And one of the girls stopped me. She said to me, she's not making money and you are. She can leave. You should stay because you doing good. And it's only your first week. And I was just like, I know I'm going to stay because can't find a job elsewhere. She could depend on her boyfriend. I don't want to depend on anybody. So I ended up staying. And over time, I guess I kind of became numb to everything. Just the physicality of it. I became numb to the lap dances. I became numb to everything. 
And I know it's sad, but it's just like, this club make, made me hate being touched, period. It made me feel like every day I would go home and I would really scrub myself, like scrub my body in the shower, like hard to the point that my skin would be red. Like I would really scrub myself cause I just felt so dirty. And it's like, I know there's not a lot of clubs like that now, maybe so, cause girls just be like, oh, I'm gonna go to the most urban club and I'm gonna just pop my little butt or whatever and I'm gonna make a thousand dollars. And that's not reality for most girls, being honest. I remember the exact song I made my first thousand dollars to at this club. I started staying later at night because the money got better. I had to pay another house fee if you want to stay later as well. But it wasn't bad. House fee is probably like $50 or something like that at this time. Um, but I made my first thousand dollars to that song Thrift Shop and it was crispy, fresh hundreds. I mean, fresh singles. I saved that money for so long. Like I never touched it because it was so perfectly straight. But yeah, I made my first thousand dollars there. I was like, at one point I was like, queen of the lap dance room i had customers like doing like 10 dances and it was like i was making my money easy i didn't care about getting on stage i didn't care about walking around the bar i didn't care about talking to guys i just you know gave my conversation i had my regulars and it became like a system like okay i know like three days out the week this person's gonna come they're gonna get a minimum of this many dances and i'm gonna make a minimum of this much money blah 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 so forth and so on and I just became kind of like, it became a job, like a job, like everything else. And I became numb, like to the point that somebody could grab my arm and I probably wouldn't even notice. Or like, you know, I'll be standing there and somebody's hand is on my back or my butt and I didn't notice because I was just physically numb. I still would go home, like for months, I would go home and scrub myself. But it was just like, this is what I have to do currently to make ends me and do whatever it is I need to do or feel like I need to do at that age yeah and after that it was just you just you get deeper and deeper and that was one of the things that girls told me don't get stuck and I feel like at one point I was a little stuck and it's like yeah although I was making money because I moved on to other clubs more urban clubs more popping clubs different kind of money yeah I moved on to different clubs and I was making money and everything was going great but I was still stuck in that life i didn't not to say i didn't want to do anything else but i was okay with what i was doing and i was happy and it's like how well you was making money why wouldn't you be happy but it's in the probably in other videos once i like explain certain things you'll get the gist of it but there's a lot more that goes on than just making money and it's not just oh guys trying to have sex with you that's like the obvious there's way other stuff like i ran across pimps i ran across pimp holes, I ran across sex offenders, I ran across rapists, I have ran across some really gruesome people and even sometimes even worse girls that actually work there than the customers that come in there. So my first day dancing was a very traumatic experience. That's the best way I can say it. It was a very traumatic experience and Although I hated it with a passion for a very long time. It took me a very long time to get comfortable. I hated it so much. It was just, it became normal. And although it's like taboo, it became very much normal. And I just, I always recommend to girls, like, if you don't have to, then you shouldn't. At that time, I was trying to do something positive and I wasn't getting any leeway, and I felt like this was the option available to me. It may have been because of the people I was hanging around with. It may have just been because I just didn't see any other thing to do. But that's the option that I chose, and it's my choice, just like it's your choice. Um, if you're a girl who's watching this video because you wanna be a dancer, if you need this money to feed your kids or because you are in a bad situation or about to get put out or living in a hotel or have no stable living situation or your husband is beating you, your boyfriend is beating you, whatever the case may be, then you have to do what you have to do. If you're a girl who wants shoes and bags and meat, stuff like that, excuse me, you can go do that in a regular club without getting half naked. Don't have to do this. 
And I stress, if you don't have to, you should not. But if you find yourself between a rock, and I mean a rock and a hard place, two rocks, really, and you have to do what you have to do, Sometimes you have to, you just have to make those decisions. But if you don't need to, if it's not dire, or I need to make this much money in order to keep the lights on, I don't suggest it. You will be one of those girls, and I'm not trying to put that on anybody, but those girls are more susceptible to getting more caught up, getting more hurt, and, and coming out worse than the girls who really need to grind and get something out of this. So I thought it was kind of like a long video. I'm sorry if it's, if I spoke too much and then get straight to the point. If you have any questions, in the, um, you could drop them below. I'm gonna answer every question. Um, I don't think there's anything I left out. That was my first day working and a little bit into like my first week. But that's what I went through and it was really hard. And like I said, it was really traumatizing. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video. Even if you didn't like it or you don't respect it, like this video. Because at the end of the day, I could be always telling you, girl, you need to go get that money. And no. no, 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 A lot of girls are not built for the lifestyle that I live. And I say that with all respect. A lot of girls are not built for this. And they think it's easy. They see it on Instagram. That's why I really try not to post money and stuff like that. Because it's not what y'all think it is. It's not. There's ups and there's a really, really, really low downs. So, make sure you like. If you have a question or something to say, make sure you comment. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. This is going to be called Twerk Tales. I forgot to mention that. I have so many stories to tell. And I want you guys to hear all of them because some of these stories is crazy. <laughs> some of these stories is really crazy. I'm going to try to upload a twerk tale every week, at least once a week. So you guys can like just, you know, really get into these, these story times. So make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share this with a friend if they're thinking about dancing or if you know you just want to know what goes on but thank you guys for watching i appreciate you as always